Okay, so Junior Roberts here. We are on to this question. It says that the figure below shows light entering a piece of diamond, PQR, where the refractive index is 2.4. The ray strikes PQ at 90 degree to the air diamond boundary as shown below. So here we have our diamond, PQR. We have this ray that strikes the boundary at PQ at 90 degrees. Now let's see what the question says. So the first thing it says now we need to show the path of light as it enters the diamond and strikes the boundary at QR. So what we see right here now is that we have our incoming ray striking the boundary at 90 degrees with respect to the boundary. Now since this ray strikes at 90 degrees to the boundary, what we're going to see is that the angle of incidence because remember, our angle of incidence is always measured with respect to the normal, and the normal is always perpendicular to the boundary. So what we're going to see now is that if we were to just sketch in a normal, we could sketch our normal here. So our normal is going to be perpendicular to the boundary. So it's going to be like that. So that's our normal. Now what we see now is that our incident ray runs along the normal, so the angle of incidence is going to be zero with respect to the normal. So once that's the case, now what will happen is that our ray is just going to enter straight through. So let's just show that in now. So the ray enters straight through. So the ray will just enter straight through and continue undeviated until it strikes um, QR, right? the boundary at QR. So this is our ray after it enters. It's going to strike QR like that. All right? So that's part A. Now, part B you know, says we're to calculate the critical angle of diamond. Now, we know that we can calculate the critical angle using the expression where we say that sine of the critical angle C is equal to 1 divided by the refractive index N. Now, in our case, the refractive index N of diamond is given in the question as 2.4. So N, therefore, is 2.4. So now we're going to have sine C is equal to 1 divided by 2.4. Now we can simplify 1 over 2.4. So we're going to say sine C is equal to 1 divided by 2.4. So with the calculator, we say 1 divided by 2.4, we're going to get 0 0.42. All right, so sine C is 0 0.42. So therefore, now, to find C, you know, C will be equal to the inverse sine of 0 0.42, which when we take our calculator, now we say shift sine 0 0.42, and we get... Uh, roughly 25 degrees. So the critical angle, C, for diamond is 25 degrees. Now, in terms of the critical angle, let's just remind ourselves of the significance of the critical angle. So the critical angle, by definition, is the angle of incidence that, if exceeds it, if exceeded, when we have a ray going from a more dense medium to a less dense medium, we're going to get a condition known as total internal reflection. And that might become helpful to us later on. So once our angle of incidence, um, when the ray is going from the more dense, or in other words, the diamond to air, once that exceeds the critical angle, we're going to get total internal reflection. So let's see what's next. So next thing you know, it says, now what is the angle of incidence of the ray that strikes the boundary at QR? So we want to know what's the angle of incidence of the ray when it strikes QR. So if we observe closely, right, we're going to realize that we have a triangle being formed with these two, well, part of this side QR and part of, uh, well, part of QR and part of QP. We're going to get a triangle being formed, right? Let's just kind of um, show the triangle. So, so we have our triangle being formed like this. So that's our triangle. Just write once more. 
So that's how a triangle being formed. Now we know that the internal angles of a triangle, they all add to 180. So this right here is going to be 90 degree. So this is 90 plus 60. So therefore, now what we're going to see now is that the angle right here, theta, right? This angle here, theta, is just 180 minus the sum of the other two angles, which is 90 plus 60. So this now becomes 180 minus 90 plus 60 is going to give us 150. So therefore, the angle theta is equal to 30 degrees. So this angle here now, theta, this angle here, theta, is equal to 30 degrees. But again, we want to find the angle of incidence. Now we can remember that the angle of incidence is the angle between the incident ray and the normal. So this ray is our incident ray at the boundary QR, and we want to know what's the angle of incidence of this ray. So again, the angle of incidence is the angle between the incident ray and the normal. Now here we can consider a normal perpendicular to the boundary right here. So let's say, maybe like that. So that's our normal perpendicular to the boundary. So what we see now is that since this is perpendicular to the boundary, the angle between the normal and the boundary will always be 90 degrees. Now the angle between the boundary and the incident ray is 30 degrees, so therefore the angle between the incident ray and the normal will just be the difference of 90 and 30, which is 60. So this angle here, which is our angle of incidence, is 60 degrees. And this represents our angle of incidence at the QR boundary. So now, what we're going to say now is that the angle of incidence of incidence is equal to 60 degrees. So our angle of incidence here now is 60 degrees. So now, let's see what's next. So the next question now says we're to show the path of light until it leaves the diamond. So when the ray strikes the QR boundary at 60 degrees, right, what we see is that our angle of incidence is 60 degrees and our critical angle is 25 degrees. So the angle of incidence exceeds the critical angle. So once the angle of incidence exceeds the critical angle and we're going from a more dense medium, the diamond to air, we're going to have total internal reflection. So what's going to happen is that this ray is going to get reflected back in the medium. Now it's going to be reflected at an angle that equals that is equal to 60 degrees. So what will happen is that this ray is going to get reflected um, back into the medium, let us say, like this. It's going to get reflected back into the medium right, at an angle of 60 degrees as well, maybe something like that. So it's going to get reflected back into the medium like that. Right? Let's see if I can have a better representation. So it's going to reflect at an angle like about that. So it's going to get reflected back into the medium due to total internal reflection taking place. Now, this angle right, of reflection will be also 60 degrees. So this is also 60 degrees. So the angle of incidence and angle of reflection are both 60 degrees. So now, let's see how we can now make sense of what's happening right here. So again, considering another normal here. So if we consider a normal here, right, what we're going to see first of all, is that if this is 60 degrees, this angle right here, because they both make a 90 degree angle due to the normal being perpendicular to the boundary. So if this is 60, this is also, well, this one is going to be 30 degrees. So now, what we see now is that we're going to get an angle formed right here. So this angle, so this is 30, this is 30, again, angles of the triangle must add to 180. This is 30, this is 30. This one will obviously be 120 degrees because again, the angle theta, or let us say we we'll call this angle um, alpha. So this angle alpha is equal to 180 degrees minus, so 30 plus 30 is 60 degrees, so we're going to minus 60 degrees, which works out to be 120 degrees. So therefore this is 120. Now again, 
we need to know our angle of incidence. So now, since all of this angle is 120 degree and your normal is always 90 degree with respect to the boundary, what we're going to see now is that this angle, let's say we call this angle um, beta, so this angle beta which is between the incident ray and the normal will just be the difference of 120 and the 90 right here. So beta then now is 120 minus 90 which works out to be 30 degrees. So because the angle of incidence is 30 degree right here, we're going to have total internal reflection because the angle of incidence being 30 degrees is greater than the critical angle which is 25 degrees. So now we're going to have total internal reflection taking place again. So this ray is going to get reflected back like this and strike the boundary right there. So now let's see what we can get from that now. So this angle here right, is going to be this angle right here Right, is going to also equal to our angle of incidence, which is also 30 degrees. So let me just put that in. So this is 30 degrees right here. So this angle, this angle right here is 30 degrees. So if that's 30, right, and everything adds to 90, this is going to be 60 degrees right here. So that's 60. That's 30. 60 plus 30 is 90. So therefore, this angle right here, will have to be 90 degrees. So what we see now is that this ray is striking the boundary 90 degrees to the boundary, or striking the boundary at 90 degrees. So just as all, when it's striked at 90 degree right here, it went straight in, this one will just continue straight out. All right, so let me just put that in. So this one will continue. So this one continues straight out just like that so what's going to happen is that the light upon entering is going to refract get totally total internal reflected right here then it's going to get total internally reflected and then it's going to exit at this point so that's our question so again if there's any question in this video that you wish to get further clarification on you could post it in comments and i'll do my best to clear up any misconceptions like this if it was helpful Click subscribe on the bell so you're notified when I post new videos like this. Thank you for watching.